Hi again, Year 4. This is your second maths video for the week. So today we are going to be revising our methods for multiplication and division. So we're going to be looking at our times table facts and how we can turn those into some if I know facts. And we're going to remind ourselves of the short multiplication method. And I'll show you that and I'll show you some of the common mistakes that some people make. Um, so we can make sure that we're trying to avoid those today. We're also going to look at how we can use our times table facts to divide. So I'll show you some examples of how we can use those in a second as well. So today you'll have some multiplication questions, word problems to look at. Tomorrow you'll have a mixture of multiplication and division problems. And then on Friday, you guys have got some reasoning tasks. So this means you're going to need to use lots of mathematical language that we've been using over the last few days to reason why you've used a certain method, to explain how you've carried out a certain method, and to prove if an answer is correct or incorrect. And that will be by showing the method that you would have chosen to see if you got the right answer or see if you got a different answer. OK, so we're going to go straight in today and have a look at these multiplication and division methods. And then we'll look at an example of a multiplication and division word problem as well to see if we can pick it apart and get the answer. So we're going to start off by looking at our short multiplication method. So here I am multiplying 43 by 6 and I've set it out in my columns and I've made sure that all the digits are in the right place. So I'm going to start in my smallest column. So I need to do 3 multiplied by 6. 3 multiplied by 6 is going to be 18. Now we know I can't put 18 in my 1s column, so I need to regroup the 10. I'm going to keep that down here for now, and I'm going to keep the 8. Now the reason I'm going to keep that regrouping down at the bottom is so that I don't get confused with the numbers that I'm multiplying. So now I'm going to multiply my 10s column. I've got 4 10s, I need to multiply by 6. 4 multiplied by 6 is 24. Now I need to add the 10 that I regrouped. So 24 add 1 is 25. Regroup 2, I keep the 5. Now because I've finished all my multiplication, I can bring up the 2 that I've regrouped into my hundreds column. So my final answer is 258. Right, pause the video here, go and get yourself some scrap paper and see if you can have a go at solving this short multiplication. So I'm starting off in my smallest column, which is my ones column, and I've got to do eight multiplied by nine. Eight multiplied by nine is 72. So I'm gonna take the seven tens, regroup it, and keep the two ones. Now I can multiply my tens column, five multiplied by nine. Five multiplied by nine is 45, Add 7 is 52. So 52 tens is going to give me 500. And then I can keep those two tens. Now I can multiply my hundreds. 1 multiplied by 9 is 9. Add 5 is 14. So I regroup the 10 and keep the 4. And I finish my multiplication. So I can bring that regrouped thousand up into the right place giving me an answer of 1,422. So let's look at some calculations where we won't need to do a written method. So pause the video again and see if you can work out how you could solve these multiplication uh, number sentences in your head. So for the first one, we've got 14 multiplied by 6. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to partition this number and it's 10 and 4. Now I know that 6 multiplied by 10 is 60. And I know that 6 multiplied by 4 is equal to 24. And I can add those together to give me an answer of 84. So there are some calculations where you might be able to work it out quickly in your head that way. Here, we could use an if I know fact. I know that 3 times 8 is equal to 24, which means that 30 times 8 is going to equal 
240 because I've got one of my factors which is 10 times as big which means my answer will also need to be 10 times as big. So those are the situations where we might be able to solve the multiplication calculations in our head. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at our methods for division. So here I've got to divide 488 by 4. So I'm going to use my fourth division method. So I'm going to set it out. 488 and I am dividing by 4. So here, when we divide in short division, we have to start in the biggest column. So I've started in my 100 column. So I've got 400, and I need to divide by 4. 4 divided by 4 is equal to 1. So I'm going to record that above the 100 column. Now I can move on to my 10 column. 8 10 divided by 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. So I can record that directly above my 10 column. Moving on to the ones column, I've got eight ones, and I'm dividing by four. Eight divided by four equals two. So my answer is going to be 122. Let's have a look at an example where there is going to be some regrouping. So here I've got 756, and I'm dividing by six. So I'm going to start in my biggest column, seven divided by six. Now, if I were to draw my 700s, and I'm going to pretend I've got some hundreds counters here, I'm trying to see how many groups of six I can make. So I can make, that is one group of six, and there is one left over. So I can make one group of six. And with the hundred that's left over, I'm going to regroup it into my tens column. So I now have 15. Now I need to do 15 divided by 6. So I need to think how many groups of 6 can I make out of 15? So I can use my 6 times tables here and I can count in my 6s to see how close I can get to 15. So let's count in 6s. 6, 12, 18. Now I've gone too far there. So I know that I can get two groups of 6, which gets me to 12. And then that means I have three left over, which would take me up to my total of 15. So I'm going to regroup the three into my ones column. Now I've got 36 in my ones column, 36 divided by six. Now I know my six times tables, and I know that six multiplied by six is equal to 36, which means that 36 divided by six is equal to six, giving me an answer of 126. Now there are some division calculations you might be able to do in your head. So for example here we have 420 divided by 6. I can use an if I know fact. If I know that 42 divided by 6 gives me 7, then I know that 420 divided by 6 will be equal to 70 because the whole number I started with was 10 times as big, which means that my answer will also be 10 times as big. Here I've got 39 divided by three. I'm going to use my partitioning to divide quickly in my head. So I'm going to partition it into its place values. So 30 divided by three equals 10. And 9 divided by 3 equals 3. And those together give me an answer of 13. So there are some division calculations which we can do in our head. OK, so let's have a look at some word problems together. A shop sells cupcakes in boxes of 24. I buy eight boxes. How many cupcakes do I have all together? So I've circled the key information I'm given in numbers and I've underlined any words that I think are clues that are asking, showing me what I'm being asked to do. So I know that each box has got 24 cupcakes in it and I'm buying eight of these boxes. So I'm going to draw my eight boxes to help me visualise what is being asked and each of those 
got 24 cupcakes in. So I can see here that I have got eight lots of 24. I want to know what that is all together. So I can see I'm going to need to do 24 times eight. So I'm going to set that out in my short multiplication. And I'm going to start in my smallest column. Four multiplied by eight is 32. I'm going to regroup the three tens and keep the two ones. Now I'm going to multiply my tens. Two multiplied by eight is 16. Add three is 19. And I haven't got any hundreds to regroup, so I can just bring up that regrouped digit. My final answer will be 190. Two. Okay, have a look at one more. I have 471 pounds. I'm going to share it equally between three charities. How much money will each charity receive? So I know I'm starting out with 471. That's my total amount. And I'm sharing it. And that word share, I know means I need to divide. So I'm dividing it, sharing it between three. I want to know what is going to be the value of each of those parts. So I'm going to need to do 471 divided by three. So let's have a go on our short division. 471 divided by three. So four divided by three. Let's count up in our groups of three. So one lot of three equals three. I know I can get one group of three and then there'll be one left over bringing me up to four. Now I've got 17 divided by three. So let's count in my threes and see how close I can get to 17. One times three is three. Two times three is six. Three times three is nine. Four times three is 12. Five times three is 15. Six times three is 18. So six times three is too big. But five times three is 15. So I know I can get five lots of threes there, which gives me 15. And then there are two left over, taking me up to my total of 17. So I regroup those two, which gives me 21 in my ones column, 21 divided by three. I can use my three times table. And I know that three times seven is 21. So 21 divided by three would be seven. So that means each charity is going to get 100 and 57 pounds 